Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. We would like to introduce us. We're here from Berlin, representing the House of the World Cultures, who is also aiming to produce knowledge about foreign European, non-European cultures, but also promoting, what I would say, and speaking about multiculturalism and what comes after and beyond. I would like to introduce you with me, the panelists. On my right hand side, Bernd Scherer, director of the House of World Cultures in Berlin since 2007. Before he was directing the Goethe Institute in Pakistan and in Mexico, in between staying in Berlin also at the House of World Cultures representing human societies, the Department of Human Societies. And to my very right hand side, Christian Philipp Müller, artist, Berlin-based artist, also New York-based artist, well known to all of you, I suppose, and one of the specialists in institutional critique. First of all, I would like to ask you, Ben Schill, we're talking today about what is coming, is it okay? We would like to... We would like to talk to you today and discuss about what is coming after multiculturalism. We said beyond multiculturalism would be the topic of today. And we asked, so I asked <coughs> you, Ben Schill, why have you initiated, first of all, beyond multiculturalism? And also, why have you invited Christian Philipp Müller, Swiss artist, so for this show? <clears throat> Perhaps I start with the second question because it illustrates also the first one. Uh, when we, were we are celebrating this year 20 years of Haus der Kultur in der Welt, House of World Cultures, uh, and uh, Christian Philipp Müller will do one of the major projects uh, in this context. So uh, when we started to select the artists for this project, as a Haus der Kultur in der Welt, House of the Cultures of the World, to be correct in English, we were looking for what are the most <laughs> exotic cultures nowadays from a Berlin point of view. And we came up uh, at the end with Bavaria and Switzerland. So uh, finally Switzerland won. Uh, and uh, so we were looking around the Swiss artists who could be the one uh, working with us. And Christian Philipp Müller, uh, we, ch we have chosen Christian Philipp Miller because of several reasons. You mentioned already he is institutional critique. Uh, uh, his strategies is institutional critique. Uh, and what I found very important is the ironic languages, he, uh, language he used. Because as a house, the Kultur in der Welt, as a house of world cultures, when we were founded, uh, this was a, a really Western idea how to represent the world. Uh, from a European perspective, we describe how the world is. And uh, of course, now we are in a situation where we see that there are very different world views, very different world concepts. So this kind of universalistic approach is not anymore possible. And therefore, we are we're looking for an artist who has this ironic approach, because the ironic approach helps you to reflect, to distance yourself to, uh, what, uh, to what you were do doing. But besides that, I think uh, Christian could describe uh, his project, the way he is uh, approaching us. So Christian Philbert, are you really humorous? And is that really an institutional critique that you're approaching the house, this house? I don't know. I mean, this whole uh, 30 minutes is uh, under the label of beyond multiculturalism, but maybe we should name it beyond institutional critique. <laughs> um, what I was doing the last two months is basically talk to a lot of people and uh, conducting interviews from people who run different departments because, uh, no, number one, of course, I went to see Bernd Scheer, the intendant who sits uh, to the left of mine, to ask, what is this, uh, the house of our cultures? What are the world cultures? And, um, and from then on, I went to the different department heads, 
um, and uh, started to talk to people who work uh, for uh, over 20 years in this institution. I also talked to many people from Africa, from all, all over the world. Uh, do you go to this house? Why do you go to this house? What kind of aspects do you like about this house? Uh, when I mention this word, Haus der Kultur und der Welt, what comes to your mind? Do you see first a building or do you first see uh, uh, content? And maybe what I would like to read and uh, go back to Bernd Scherer is uh, I found the uh, Eintragung ins Handelsregister because uh, this uh, house uh, was of course uh, a gift in 1957 by the Americans and it was Haus der Freien Rede, House of the Free Speech and the house was uh, baptized by uh, an attractive young lady with a bottle of champagne and it was baptized not Haus der Kultur und der Welt but uh, Benjamin Franklin. So we, are, we find ourselves uh, so many years later and then in 88 uh, this Handelsgesellschaft um, described uh, itself like that but uh, sorry I have to go back to the German and I would like to ask uh, Bern how in regard to this kind of explanation of 88 how he sees the house and also Kultur und der Welt, cultures of the world uh, in, in kind of new terminology. So this whole society was founded with a Stammkapital of 50,000 D-Mark uh, and, uh, and the uh, kind of like description uh, of what the house was supposed to do was as follows, now in German. Die Präsentation der Kulturen der Länder, vornehmlich der dritten Welt, durch Ausstellungen, Theater und Musikgastspiele, literarische Veranstaltungen und sonstige Vorhaben auf dem Gebiet der Kultur. Ferner soll die Gesellschaft Interesse bei in- und ausländischen Veranstaltern an der Durchführung vergleichbarer Vorhaben wecken. Die Gesellschaft soll durch ständige Zusammenarbeit mit den Ländern der dritten Welt und ihren kulturtragenden Einrichtungen das Verständnis für diese Kulturen fördern und vertiefen. Die Gesellschaft wird dabei eng mit den Goethe-Instituten zusammenarbeiten. Can you today still talk uh, of the third world? Is this term even actually still allowed? 2009. Yes. So, so probably uh, we should yeah, show some yes, images. You may show, you show. Yes. Uh, some images so. now. <coughs> um, I think the interesting aspect of the house, or one interesting aspect of the house in the last 20 years was that the world profoundly changed and therefore also the whole concept and the strategy of the cultural strategy of the house changed. When we speak of third world or what was meant with third world, number a first observation you do when you uh, work in the house is in summertime you encounter what used to be the third world in front of the house. Uh, there are Turks, there are Thai people sitting around the house cooking and uh, enjoying themselves, doing picnic basically. So uh, when, when we speak about the third world nowadays, first of all, I think it's important to see that these cultures are part of our societies. <laughs> and uh, I give you one example how the house is dealing with this kind of issues then. Uh, we invited one of the major Afro-American artists, William L. Pope, who defines himself as the, most, the nicest Afro-American artist in the United States. And he was uh, analyzing exactly the situation I described, that we have all the cultures already around the house. and. Uh, when you know his work, I mean, one of his major issues is, of course, uh, the color. So he developed uh, a project uh, in creating what he called zones of discomfort, discomfort, discomfort zone, zones of uneasiness. And uh, the, the object to create these zones was what you call in German, Negerküsse. I don't know these uh, sweet things which are black outside and white inside. So he uh, uh, <laughs> bought about thousands of negerküsse and went to the people around the house and started negotiating with them about the issue of blackness, whiteness, and bringing these people into inside the house. So I think this is one of our aspects of multiculturalism today uh, and also of what we call, used to call third world, that these are people of our cities and the issue of an institution like ours is 
to develop projects, art projects, to, to negotiate with these people, to bring them into the house, to be a platform uh, for them. Perhaps I... M maybe I should ask yes. another question. Um, the, the house was built as a Congress Center in 1957 and was built uh, as a, it was um, it initiated as a present from the Americans to the uh, German people. And uh, of course, if you have like kind of a mini UN where also the Bundestag was a uh, tag on tag, uh, I don't know how to say, I mean, the, the, uh, po the political uh, uh, for, I mean, the, the most official po political uh, instrument of, of uh, Germany kind of were housed there because there was, there were not, the buildings in Bonn were not ready yet and the, and the Reichstag was of course uh, destroyed. You also have to understand that this building sits directly across the Reichstag and, and uh, in, in the kind of Regierungs uh, district. So where, where uh, Bernd Scheer and, uh, and Meyers sit with the Haus der Kultur Welt is really directly across uh, the building where Angela Merkel resides and it's the most uh, at the very, it's the very heart, it's the government district of Berlin. But also when you have this kind of architecture from 1957, uh, I found uh, many containers in the, in the East Garden. And then I asked what are, what's happening in these containers. There's a particular container. One container has a second roof. And I said, what, why this second roof? And they said, this is the, 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 the birthplace of radio multiculturalism. Multiculti radio. This radio doesn't exist anymore. So, uh, and of course, the roof was to prevent the studio from ha recording live, <laughs> sending the, the signals out of the rain pouring onto the container. Because the, the, the house lacks storage, the house lacks offices, the house is a mini UN, but now, of course, 2009 is something completely different than what it was in 1957, maybe also what it was in 1989. So when, when, you, when we are on this panel talking about beyond multiculturalism, now even the radio multiculti is gone. W what is the situation of the music and the house now? I mean, that there used to be like weekly concerts at Coffee Global, there used to be a Wunsch concert, there used to be like thousands of people, you know, f going into the into the house of Kulduna Welt just for the music. Of course, the the, the, the house of Kulduna Welt is not just a concert hall. Yes. What is the house of Kulduna Welt yes. now? No, I think that's uh, it's a good, very good question. Uh, I, the first thing what I have to say is when this question is asked, what is a house? I say it's not a museum. It's not a concert hall. It's not a theater. It's something new. It's something for the globalized world, I would say. And uh, we have now, you have one image uh, of a project we did uh, uh, one and a half year ago. What became for us very important when we thought, how can an institution reflect in its work the whole world? What became very important is to say you have to reflect on your own context, what you are, what kind of institution you are. And in that context, the house itself, the architecture, the place became very important. And uh, what uh, Christian already mentioned, this house was a present of the United States in 1957. So it was really a symbol in Berlin of post-war modernist architecture. So we started to reflect on projects re which reflect exactly this situation and the spaces. So in this context, we invited, for example, here um, a Chinese artist, uh, uh, Song Dong, a very important Chinese artist. And he, what he did is he brought the house of his mother to Berlin. The wooden construction you saw with the old uh, mother's house in the center of Beijing, which has to be removed in uh, 2001. And all the objects you, saw, you, saw, uh, you see spread over the whole uh, uh, foyer of the house are the objects the mother collected in 40 years. She started actually collecting these objects in the 50s up, and uh, she, she told me even in 57, she had a very clear memory <coughs> about each of these objects uh, she collected. So what you have here is just from the uh, language of the art project is you have a kind of contradiction of the massive 
uh, structure, postmodernist uh, mo modernist structure of the house itself, and this very light, fragile wooden house, and all the objects of 40 years of China, um, so to say, the material culture of China represented over this space. So, and uh, what you can see, uh, of course, you can imagine is when people from the East Germany who had, of course, very close relationship with China, and a lot of people also uh, in East Germany, but also art in post-war Germany, uh, west, uh, on the Western side, they also collected in the first decades materials, materials. So they were used to this kind of preserving culture of, of objects. And what, what, what you get is really a reflection in this work on what modernity in China is, what it means to remove these spaces, because basically the project was initiated at the point where Sung Dong realized he had to preserve that in order to give the cultural memory of his, to his mother back. So it was also a project on cultural memory and what happens in modernity by erasing all these spaces. You can go over this, mm -hmm. I think. No. Um, I think that also ra talking about yes. memory and how different cultures are able to, to memorize memory or to show up memory and what cultural richness might, will be that this work of Michael you also illustrates very well. Yes, I mean this is a work of, of Michael Jew mm. and what you see is a, is a Buddha, of mm. course uh, the head of a Buddha and uh, this Buddha has a very interesting history because the first information you get is this Buddha comes from uh, north of Pakistan. So it's a reflection of what is the culture of Pakistan today because Pakistan, of course, is nowadays connoted as being an uh, Islamic country. Um, and uh, you find in the information that it was a set one of the centers of Buddhism, of course, and a lot of, for example, Japanese people are still coming to these uh, spaces. Then second, what is important about this head is mm -hmm. it uh, comes from the second century after Christ and there's a strong Roman Greek influence on aesthetics on this head. So you had already a mixture of cultures in the second century uh, after Christ. So culture never was static, was always in process, which, which is very important. But then, uh, well, <laughs> two more information <laughs> about it. It's not the original piece, and guess where the original piece is? The original piece is at the museum, the Ethnological Museum in Dahlem. So what you have here is, uh, in this work of Michael Chu, is a reflection of this mixture of cultures in the past and, of course, what role uh, European cultures, on the one side by infecting the, the aesthetics, but on the other side by collecting and bringing all this material, these objects, to Berlin, um, uh, what, 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 so to say, colonialism meant in collecting images and presenting it. So what would be now very interesting to know is, Christian Philipp Müller, how is your mixture of cultures, how came this across if you're dealing with the house, you're dealing with all these different cultures? Oh, good. Oh, good. Now we have some uh, pictures. So uh, I told you before that I was, uh, I started collecting uh, or, and conducting interviews and uh, co collecting oral history uh, since uh, mid-April and this whole series of uh, performances of mine and also of recreate of Andri Salah, Jon Bok and Arthur Lindsay will take place from September on. And um, I kind of use this kind of uh, an instrument, a musical instrument, because uh, for me the house is always related to sound. And in a way, I wanted to have a kind of instrument that I would carry on my body, the biggest instrument ever that you can carry on your body and walk around with, uh, was first conceived in Berlin. And it's also a true collab collaboration between Germany and America. Then John Philip Sousa transformed, he turned the, her the horn from up, this kind of funnel position forwards. So in a way, like in a f into a funnel, I collected all this information um, and that uh, will continue until September. And then I kind of spit it out 
and I lay this kind of like what I call in German Klangspuren. I kind of uh, take people on the tour and to me this kind of multidisciplinary and um, multicultural house to me it's it's still not beyond I mean one with one foot it's beyond and with one it's still deeply anchored is in this kind of whole notion and uh, to me in a way when I come to, uh, to, to uh, to me, it kind of means a whole big tova bohu, which, uh, interestingly enough, uh, comes from the Bible. Uh, and Luther described, uh, described and translated it. It's a Hebrew word, tova bohu. And it, in English, it doesn't really have a, a special meaning. It does have one in French, and tohi bohu. And tova bohu means, uh, and the earth, uh, the Erde war wüst und leer. That means uh, it's not just Babylonia, where everybody talks. Uh, in different languages and nobody understands the other. It's in fact, we have a blank sheet, if we have a blank slate and everything is possible. That's why after so many years, um, still everything is possible. And, but it, of course, it's, it, it's about, you know, it's all about the people who, lead, who yeah. run this house and the people who go to this house to, to come and see whatever the attractions there if, are. If you I, you know? I think so really, uh, this project is, is really wonderful because, I mean, <laughs> you developed it with coming from the outside, but it really reflects the spirit of this place to reinvent mm -hmm. itself constantly. And after 20 years, I think we are in a quite uh, strong situation of reinventing ourselves. Of course, and that I think is very important, what we do, you saw that with the Song Dong piece, you saw it with the Michael Chu piece, but also now also with the work of Christian Philipp Müller, we reinvent the house with the artists. We are not just having ideas in our head, mm -hmm. we are developing projects with the uh, William L. Pope, this idea of uh, data Küsse and bringing in let's say the Mikan community uh, around the house into that. This was an art project. So for us, it's very important in this whole process of re reinvention ourselves to develop these kind of projects with artists. I mean, can I have, I have, I have one question? I mean, I, for instance, also talk to the projectionist and I do know that you're one of the very few proud owners of a 70 millimeter projector in Berlin, yeah. how you're, planning to use that incredible piece of machinery. You have a, 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 a space for 1,000 visitors. You could have the most, stage the most fantastic film festival. How, how would you, how in the future, do you see this kind of combination of film, art, music, yeah. uh, lectures, celebrities? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I said already at the beginning, we are not a museum, we are not uh, a theater place. What is interesting is, the space we have, you saw some of the images from outside and inside, it's an incredible architecture and for us the challenge is to develop with the artists related to the spaces and related to the technology we have uh, projects. And as far as film is concerned, uh, at the moment we are developing quite uh, extensive film projects or film projects for next year and you are all invited to come and to check. So now I would like to ask you if there is any questions around. Do you would like to either ask Christian Philipp Müller or Ben Scherer? <coughs> Please. Today we are a melting pot of many different cultures. And you have the pluridimensional, um, t because now the internet and all this. Um, hmm. I. I be how will uh, I like this? You have a private history, your own. You go also through culture. You have your own life, and you have this—I don't know—the gap between the two. I myself, I, I'm also in a multi multicultural, co and I have lived in Africa, and yeah, I, I like the idea very much about uh, the history that you bring in, and I believe there are much. Ma many more dimensions to it. And I don't think I even think in any culture anymore. I have visions of life, I have thoughts, and I put them into, in, yeah. Yes. And how will that have an impact? Because now I have lived in Africa, they uh, have the image back, they get it back to them, as they have the internet all over. I mean, we have just half an hour, so I think we could <laughs> go on for, for hours. But one point, to which extent cultures are important. 
I think in the in the creative process itself, you don't think of cultures. You just realize a project. It's only if you look, try to reconstruct the historical dimensions to it, you can see. Oh, this is coming. Let's say from uh, from Budo influences in Japan, or this is coming <coughs> from. Uh, let's say baroque influences uh, of Europe. This doesn't play a role in the actual process. It's just it helps you to give a, your work uh, a historical dimension. And and but this became very important for us because the house was completely concentrating on the contemporary. From time to time, to have historical reflections. For example, we we talked about how important the 60s were as far as art production is concerned, and how radical uh, the experiments in the 60s were. And I think when you uh, would like to do projects on multimedia, for example, uh, art, uh, you have to reflect on, if you are reflexive of your work, on this historical dimension. Some more questions? Yes, please. Yes, please. Uh, each culture expresses itself by its language. So, uh, in a multicultural or beyond multicultural language uh, project, you have a thousand languages and correspondingly a thousand cultures. How are you going to master this project, uh, this question? Uh, if you have English only, it's monocultural. Yes. <laughs> now, uh, for, for us, uh, this aspect is a very important aspect, and Christian Philipp Miller, not by chance, mentioned the aspect of the United Nations. The building was really conceived as a United Nations building, so you <coughs> have in all the major halls, you have uh, uh, cabins for translation. And we try, whenever uh, budget-wise possible, to work with the original languages and getting translations. The issue of translation is a major issue for the house. Translation, of course, basically on verbal language, but also plays a role in other uh, uh, art languages too. But you are completely right. The, to, to take uh, the languages seriously and, uh, and thereby reflecting on translation aspect is a very, very important aspect. Some more? Is there anything to comment from your side? I can only say, for instance, that with my instrument, with my live performances in September, I will have recordings of many famous uh, people who came to the house, like from Susan Sontag to Salman Rushdie to many, many, uh, uh, like uh, Mohammed Tani, for instance, is a writer who uh, I witnessed his reading. And, uh, and you, you clearly hear, uh, it's in English, but it's, it's, it's clear that he's coming from Pakistan, or at least from India, from that, that part of the world. And, and these colors of the language to me are very important. But the English is, it's, you know, it's, in, it's rather insane, because we just found out one minute before we came to the stage that we had to do this in English and not in German. I said, how's the Kultur der Welt is in Berlin. And for instance, with my sousaphone, my sousaphone is in a way like a speaker, right? And so I have all kinds of music and all kinds of languages, but then, like, like in hip hop, I can talk, you know, and I can translate to whoever people come to my tours and whoever languages they talk. I don't speak so many, maybe seven. So then I can translate whatever that I have recorded. Uh, but to me, what's interesting is like, does maybe a question to end this whole thing? Does music and art need translation, or does it stand on its own two legs? Mm -hmm. Maybe it can, and maybe that's the answer. That, that where we can all communicate with music and with art without words. So I think art is, the, art is the key and art is the general key to all of it, or the kind of miracle key to all of it. No, I, I think uh, <laughs> related to that, uh, what the house is also, you can say it makes misunderstanding sometimes creative. Because misunderstanding, I mean, there will be a lot, there are a lot of misunderstandings going on, and the question is, can they become creative or not? Uh, because we have constantly, I mean, you realize <coughs> that by behavior, by, of course, language, you misunderstand in this intercultural 
um, uh, exchanges, you misunderstand somebody, but quite often this is a source of creation. So I can say, happy misunderstanding, go creative. Thank you very much for your audience.